So now we combine all of these different observations. So Boyle's law reminding that, you know, that pressure times volume is equal to a constant at constant temperature. Charles's law, volume over temperature is a constant at constant pressure. And Avogadro's law is that volume divided by the number of moles is equal to a constant. By combining all of these, you end up with the pressure times the volume is equal to the number of moles multiplied by a constant and multiplied by temperature. The constant's called the gas constant. So just going back to the equations of state where we spoke about that in an abstract way before, now you can see what this really means. It means that now we can write, if we want to, pressure is equal to nRT over V, volume is equal to nRT over P. They're examples of equations of state. There are more complicated ones we'll talk about later, and that's basically when the, when the ideal law breaks down, more complicated equations can be used. When is the ideal law valid? So the ideal gas is a theoretical gas composed of a set of randomly moving non-interacting point particles. So we assume zero volume for the particles, and we also assume that they don't attract one another in any way, so there's no forces occurring between them. Of course, this isn't true, really. But if you think about situations where you have a, a relatively big volume, low density, the, mo the molecules themselves aren't going to be very near each other anyway. They're going to be scattered about. And to a large extent, this is true. But, it, but as you um, increase the pressure, um, the molecules are going to move closer and closer together and they're going to start to interact with one another. And that is where you get problems with this law. There are laws that, that account for this um, and they usually use empirical parameters. So, you, so experimental parameters for each gas. So you, you need to know some information about the physical properties of the molecules in order to be able to calculate using the more accurate equations. So for real gases, we want to consider collisions and also the well, finite size of the molecules and also the interactions between them. When a gas can be considered ideal, it's when this condition exists, that is when the mean free path is much bigger than the collision cross-section. So if you think about it, what that really means is if the mean free class is really big and the collision cross-section is really small, then the molecules don't have much of a chance of bumping into each other because they don't see each other. If this isn't the case, then the molecular interactions have to be taken into account.